what is good lad and ladettes and today we got a request that came without the threat of inscribing a penis on my forehead so you know when someone asks nicely to do something quackers provides quackers provides for his crew because he's a good lad as usual all the difficulty straight in there today what we are doing is a juventus rebuild without ronaldo first things first i'm gonna say if i can sell ronaldo i'll sell him if not, by the first game of the season, if he isn't gone, contract ripped up, thrown away, stuff up someone's arsehole, gonzo. Could you rather though? Old, gone, you know it's FIFA. If you're old, you're out of here. It's pretty clear though where Juve's issues lie. Their centre midfield is not just porous, it is not just injury prone, it is not just shit, it is not just detrimental, it is not just embarrassing. It's also all of the above. So first signing was always going to be an SMS. And it's not going to be a fraudulent dick pic like Barcelona signed. It's going to be a really nice, well-angled one. But as well, we've spent a big chunk of change. So we're going to need to come build from within. Kulevsky our new cam. Ronaldo, sadly, no offers for him. So we had to go. Didn't matter the first game of the season. Big Paolo. You're all thinking he's going to play a huge part, obviously. Two goals. Brilliant. Next one. Did Quackers make a realistic signing on a crew mode save? Yes, I did. It is the hour for hour. Hossam hour signs for Juve. 43 million. Do not mind if I do. And then I got this offer for Paolo. And I took my time thinking about it. And then I accepted. This is just to be honest, Paolo Dabal, he's done a lot for Juve. He's been there a long time, but I think even Juve fans would never say he hit that height. That I feel like he was world class or on the cusp of world class, but he never did it consistently. So we get rid of him and get a new youngster who will hit it. Erlin Halland. You didn't think I was going to make this hard for myself, surely, did you? You didn't really think I was going to do like a hard challenge. No fucking chance. This is a Saturday upload. This means it's piss easy. Erlen Talland with the Dybala money. I feel like if you offered that to Juve fans in real life, they'd be all over that. So I doubt I'll have too many complaints. Margin Boo joins the club. Hopefully no one has Goku. Because we are planning on fucking everyone up with him. As you can see though, that is the team for the first six months at least we've gone back to the free back because when Juventus were at the peak of their powers free Ronaldo Barzagli Bonucci Chiellini the BBC oh god we're eighth so maybe I'm gonna get sacked oh, fuck. Um, so let's hope for some big improvement but thankfully we are still in the Champions League and when you see Chelsea as team we're playing you've got to think Round the 16 could come quarterfinals pretty easy. Not only that, comfortably through our group stages. And this time, the Champions League is kicking off. The knockout stages are upon us. The Chelsea Rent Boys versus the old ladies. The age old question are Rent Boys strong and old ladies? Does not have a decisive answer first. Bye bye. Don't let the door hit you with a good lord split. But it does in a second. Erlen Halland with the brace. Timo the tyrant Werner. Absolutely helpless to defend. And onto the quarters against FC Bayern Munchen themselves. As you can see, Benucci's out. We're going for Christian Romero. Someone a bit younger. Someone who could potentially grow a bit. We recalled him. It's looking like a good idea early on. 1-0 against Bayern, but can we hammer the advantage home? You are damn right. A semi-final already. Struggling in the league. Who cares? What CR7 came here to do wasn't to win the league. It was to win the Champions League. And with that 1-1 again... Oh. I was going to say that was a good result and we could go into the semis with hopes of doing that in our first season and making this a short video but apparently not I really got my hopes up there 
It's like, you know when you, when you see that like PS3 shaped box at Christmas? And then it's just a shoebox. Because I've got big clown feet. As you can see though, we were actually Now fourth. I'm panicking. Yeah, Don't panic. No, I am because I'm going to lose my job. But I'm not going to lie, boys. I'm expecting a message any day now. The UV management to just say, lads, you didn't quite cut it here. I'm sorry. Just fuck off, to be honest. You bit shit. Come off the 30th day. Come off the message. And come off the most delusional, <laughs> dementia-ridden old people I've ever met because they kept me. Quackers is back. For season two, the Juventus fans, they are in absolute agony when they heard the news. But they're going to be in cheers and celebrations or whatever the fuck they do. Latoro Martinez signed. What a partnership. Latoro and Erling Haaland, two of the brightest, if not the brightest, young strikers, if you consider Mbappe a left winger. Joined by one of the brightest centre-back prospects, Alessandro Bastoni. Weakening the league to make us even stronger. The guy's name even begins with a B so he can help us bring the big bat back, cock back in defence. A big, big chunk of change. But we need to get back to Juve Sanders. The old lady has not got long left to live. She is not going to have much patience with me. And when her funeral comes, I do not want to be the one who is being told he's the cause of death. So, we had to make some big signings and I think we did. Our art growing. Arta still an aardvark sms not quite the risky dip pick yet but you know the girl's not quite blue ticked us so it's promising sms with some room to develop though we wanted some experience though the lit demro romero they're all very good players but we needed someone for the now someone who could help us win now sergio ramos we had 20 million left after a lot of player sales and we thought don't mind if I do. That is a defender who's going to come in, do a great job, and hopefully help us push up the table. Because if I come fifth again, I don't want to imagine the lengths they'll do to shove an Italian sausage up my butthole. And I quite like having a non-Italian sausage stuffed up butthole. It's looking promising, I want to say, early on, as you can see. Second in the table, two points off Lazio. And not just that, a Europa League win for the boys. What are you saying? Uh, that came pretty quickly. As you can see in the top right as well, we did lose to Atlanta on the 1st of May, a day out, of my, a day out for my birthday. To lose the title and first signing of the new window, it had to be Federico Chiesa. He tried to fuck off back to Florentina. He tried to sneak off around the back door, but my back door is impenetrable. He was sent immediately back. For a lot of money. Yeah, I genuinely had to spend most of my transfer budget on Chiesa, so I wasn't particularly hopeful of doing anything this window. I, I'm going to say I'll probably give myself five seasons. If I don't do it by then, then I'm just, I've just got to grab pretty shit the game, don't I? Can't be turning all this breeze. As you can see though, Ramos here for enough reason. Suddenly worth 47 million, so we think, don't mind if I do. Who's his replacement? Eduardo Tapsoba. Because you know, I'm quackers. I make signings you're never going to see before. I make signings you won't see in any other career mode. I don't. And I was about to bang on, but this is just quite funny. Ronaldo still rotting away in the free agency. Berardi, who we signed for 30 million last window, I don't remember if I showed it. Sold for 46. And there was a lot more sales to come. Chesney also gone out of the door for 83 million. And I know you're thinking, who is he going to replace Chesney with? Who could it be? He sold Arta for 150 and he sold Chesney for 86. Who's he got left? Donnarumma? No. I could sign Donnarumma for about 150 million. Or I could sign someone who's higher rate and not represented by a fat troll who's going to try and fleece me every step of the way. Boys and girls, if I sound a bit different now, it's because this episode was so, so intense to record 
I had to take a day off. It's not because I have a choking fetish and my throat is recording. The choking fetish is just a coincidence. But as you can see, Yano Black 100 million for arguably the best keeper in the world. The best keeper of the last five, six years. I know Manuel Neuer exists, but you know, I feel like it's a pretty strong debate between the two of them. Do not mind if I do. At the peak of his powers, if not, not even peak yet. Yano Black joins the Juve revolution and also interestingly becomes our highest rated player. And we all know we've got to look at the numbers Mason sometimes. So that's why we're going to be spending a big, big chunk on Frankie de Young. Arta did a great job for us. It was a wonderful time to play. But it's just not going to cut anymore, is he? So Frankie de Young comes in not only weakening a huge Champions League rival but making our midfield with SMS just infinite amount stronger infinite infinite amount stronger we walked up to Barca like PSU did what they said Neymar slapped the check on the table slapped I'm assuming it's Laporte now whoever the fuck they got in charge and said we'll be having that young lad that definitely sounds like a pedo joke but it isn't one as you can see Chesney, Arta, Berardi, all gone. Money in the bank. Money swiftly spent because I'm an absolute idiot who has no idea how to save money. And it's on to the season, boys. As you can see, December went pretty well. But how did the rest of the season go? That is the real question, isn't it? I mean, that's looking pretty decent. And that is looking pretty ridiculous. Unbeaten after 18 games. Juve did it once. Juve at the absolute peak of their powers went unbeaten for a full season. We're saying it's Quackers TV on top. It may be Piemonte Cosio now, but it's still Juventus at the heart of it. Unbeaten our Champions League group, unbeaten league, yet to lose a game this year. That is how unbelievable we have been. But can we stick to it as we enter the knockout stages of the Champions League? I mean, that's uh, it's looking pretty promising, isn't it? Our midfield two absolutely battering people. Bye bye! And sending Seville on their bike, saying, fuck off, lads. Chin taken for a spin, jaw hit with the manlable claw, onto the Chelsea Rent Boys for a rematch. Old ladies versus Rent Boys. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. Oh, it's cool. We're going to say Chelsea Rent Boys versus Juve Old Ladies. Two electric boogaloo. But we'll swiftly move on to a battering of the chic money in the semi-finals. And it's looking, boys and girls, like we might have a cup final here. We might have a Champions League final. Nearly bottled it, but you know... If you don't know why that effect is played, you're about to find out. As you can see, not only did we finish unbeaten, we hit that beautiful, beautiful 100, 100 point club. Most goals scored, least conceded. That team just looks ridiculous as well, doesn't it? 92 Delit, 91 Dion. As you can see as well, controversial decision. We dropped Yano Black for this. I think you'll accept why when it comes to Gian Luigi Buffon having the potential. Oh my god, he looks so ugly there. Gian Luigi Buffon having the potential to lift his first ever Champions League trophy with the club he loves. Plus some, come off the hour, come off the man. Yeah, that badge just. That badge just is so dirty. They need, they need, how have Juventus not got human rights and FIFA? It's just a joke. We're trying to do what Juventus have not been able to do. Is it even, have they even won it this century? I generally don't think they've won it this century. Juventus' history in the Champions League in the 21st century is not pretty. That table though, looks pretty damn pretty. We came through the absolute hardest of the hard groups did not stop us hards of the hard runs 
did not stop us. Juventus's last win in the Champions League, as I delayed that beautifully, I was one years old. 1996, Juventus, one of the biggest teams in the world. Well, they're about to play a defensive pairing of John Stones without Ruben Diaz and Harry Maguire. I'm going to be real. If we're not going to win it this time, I'm just going to retire from like YouTube full stop. If you can't beat Harry Maguire and John Stones with Erlen Haaland, Lataro Martinez, Hassan Kamath Diawa, SMS, Frankie de Young, Dejan Kulevsky, whose name's too complicated to get a nickname, Federico Cheese. That was an awful one, but I'm taking it off the top of my head. Matthias De Litt. Bastoni. Can't remember. Taps over, that's the other bastard. And the pensioner in net. When can you win it? Truly, when can you win it? Boys, it is time for kickoff. And it's time for pressure. With one with his first test of the episode. Wasn't really much of a test, was it? And we come forward. Awesome hour. Cool. Beautiful Just one, cool. two. Into the mouth. <laughs> nice. 20 minutes in, we show everyone that isn't going to be the same as the last Barcelona Juventus final. Neymar, gone. Suarez, gone. Iniesta, Xavi, fucked off. Busquets, old. PK, shagging Shakira somewhere. Juventus, leading. Hassan, come of the hour. Come of the goal. Nearly gagged on something there. Not quite sure what. But here comes Federico Chiesa. Running down the wing. Whips it in. Beautifully to Lotaro. The ball. Shit finish. Barca come forward though with Messi. Determined to lead these troops back into it. Oh. You've got to say it was a good effort. Absolutely putting the defenders on toast. Making them look real butters. But what doesn't look ugly is that scoreline at halftime. 1-0 to the old lady. Lotaro into Hasmauer. Erling Haaland driving through. Sergio, you can't be committing like that, mate. You've committed to the wrong girl there. Sergio, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. Lad. I'm pretty sure that commitment is going to end in divorce. But all I do know for sure is that commitment there led to your team conceding. 2-0 to the old lady. Dejan Kulevsky. Say that three times fast. Definitely made a lot of you uncomfortable there. This team, by the way, has absolutely no depth. So do not expect any substitutes. I spent all of my money selling all of my depth players to get some form of starting 11 that could win this and one more season. It's clearly paid off because depth is overrated apparently. Speaking of overrated though, Barcelona are looking at right now Junior Firpo, Fabian, Andy Fatty just not cutting it. The triple F's is looking like a failure right now. Lionel Messi into Marcel Sabitzi. You just look at these signings and you think they are not signings to rebuild around. I mean you bought Harry Maguire. They spent the Frankie de Jong money on Marcel Sabitzer and Fabien and by God has it come back to bite them in the arse. Frankie de Jong bags his third of the year, bags our third of the game and all round just ends it. Barcelona, I'm sorry boys and girls, it is over, it is done. The fat lady is singing loud and clear and she is singing Messi is probably going to hand in a transfer request because he doesn't like losing anymore. Juventus lost Ronaldo. Barcelona hung on to the decrepit, aging, wart ridden body of the GOAT Lionel Messi. And I'm sorry to say, Barcelona fans, it has not paid off. The final whistle goes. Gianluigi finally gets his Mario moment. Harry Maguire and John Stones were never going to cut it. Erling, Margin, Boo, Haaland. Lotaro, the ball, Martinez. Hassam, come of the hour. Imagine that front three going up against what is depressingly probably going to be England's back two in the Euros. We have done it, boys and girls. Maybe not wearing the famous zebra stripes, but led by the famous Juventus legend, Gianluigi Buffon. Ronaldo came and went. Del Piero 
came and went. Marquisio, Nedved, Perlo, Bonucci, Cellini still hanging on on the bench. Buffon stayed to do this for this moment. Lifting the Champions League with the team he loves. Piemonte Calcio no more. Because Juve have gone to EA, slapped him in the fucking face and said pay us. We just won the Champions League. We don't give a shit. You owe us. You owe your fans this. Boys and girls, it's been real. I'll leave a comment down below pinned. Let me know which team you want me to rebuild next. Which scenario you want me to hit next. Because we all know I'll hit it. We all know I'll succeed. There is not a single failure on this channel. And anyone who says otherwise can suck out. Your mum's a pagan. And she doesn't love you. But you know what I love boys and girls? I love my crew. I love Quacker's crew. So you know what I want boys from you? Show some love back if you like the video. If you like the video, please hit the like button. If you loved the video, please subscribe. And if you really loved it, and you want to marry it, a menage a trois, it's always better than a twosome. So share it with your mates. What can I say though boys, that beautiful image is going to bring this episode to an end, so I'll see you around, have a good one.